Hey guys, so in my previous video, you saw that we gave the nursery bins the pumpkin. So today, I want to show you something. These th two bins here, they were set on 10-7 and around the 1st of November, about four weeks, I would say. You harvest them, but I'm not going to wait the four weeks. I'm going to do it at three weeks. So today is a three week, so we're going to harvest these today. We're gonna remove the adults, and we're gonna see how many cocoons I could get out of these tub tubs. I have one, two, and three. I would use Harvey, but my family is upstairs sleeping, so I'm gonna use this harvester. Normally, I have it on the mortar bin, and it fits perfect on this one, but that's where I have the red wigglers that I'm gonna give away. So this is what I have right now, and <laughs> I taped. I tape this so it catches the worms and the big debris and then the cocoons and the little babies and the castings will fall here. I love this thing. This is a quarter inch. Um, a lady makes them. I'll see if I could find her information again and link it. Um, I think if you buy it, she gives you a 10% off or I don't know. She, she gives you some kind of discount. And she donated this to me when uh, my hands got all freaked up from COVID because I had a hard time harvesting. So, and it's manual. And yes, everything falls out of here if I spin it fast. But if I go slow, for the most part, it, it stays put. So you see, look. The only thing that I would do different to this design is I would open up something here with a chute so you could pour the stuff up here and have it go in and out the other end. But what I do is I come over here, I put the scoop in, and then I turn it. This thing has uh, saved me, I'm telling you, I, I love it. And it's a PVC pipe, and these things turn to fit on here in case you have a smaller bin, a larger bin. But anyway, we're gonna harvest these um, worms out of here, or I might do it by hand. It depends how wet the castings are. Wet castings usually don't do great in this because, well, it, it clogs up all the holes, you know? So what I'm going to look into building, or maybe someone will donate to me, <laughs> is one of those flat harvesters that's a square, that's wood, and it has little wheels on it. And you put the stuff on top and you go like that back and forth. I think everything falling like that would be less mess. And uh, I think it'd be good exercise for my hands. So we're going to do this. And um, we're gonna check them and see what they're doing. Wow, look at that. Nice chunky red wigglers. So you know my channel is about showing everything the real way because I'm not a fake person. So I wanna show you the mess. And yes, it is a mess in here. My goal is to take care of them and feed them and water them before I worry about the mess. That's priority. But you know, worm farming is a very messy career. If you don't like messes, don't even bother getting into this career because you're, you're going to have a lot of mess. I've had castings in my hair, um, in my shoes, down my cleavage. I've had them in my socks. I mean, it is it is a messy, messy, messy job, but I think it's worth it. So this is what we're going to do. Let me see if I could set up my camera on the this tripod thing, which I hate the tripod, by the way. So I put you here so you can see here. These are my red wigglers with the castings and the their bedding. We're going to test out this smaller little scoop first, just so I can see if it's sticking a lot. If it is, I'm going to have to just do the light method by hand. But let's just test it out. So I have to go like that. And let's see. I'm going slow so I don't lose the cones, and so you can see it anyway. You see how it's rolling out the front? Sometimes if I go like this, it falls, but I'm very gentle because this could break. I mean, it is plastic. But isn't this a great contraption? Some people take this outside and sift their compost. You could do that. Look at that. Now, if I were to put something underneath it and tilt this part higher, it would go faster down, but then I'd, um, I wouldn't get as much down here because I've done it. 
look you can see the stuff look you can see the worms falling in sometimes they fall in there and I, I go get them and over here so this is not like a lot of money to invest in like those trommels that are giant round and they're outside I mean those are thousands of dollars you know I'm not at that stage yet so this 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 does okay you know I might do with what I got so if you want one I contact her and she'll work it out with you um so I'm gonna see I think it's okay to do the rest of them here let me see the casting they're okay not that not that wet let me see this little corner over here Oh, see, a lot of them fell that way. So I'm going to, I think I'm just going to do these by hand, guys. And I'll bring you with me. All right. So I hope you can see this. You know what happened to me the other day? I was filming and I didn't know I didn't press the button. So I got nothing. <laughs> that ever happened to you? <laughs> so the light method, this is what I do. I just push everything to one corner, the other side of the bin over here this way and I give them a few minutes to go down and then I just start taking off the top the bedding and moving it here and when I do that all the babies and cocoons will also go to the other side and I'm left with worms so I'm going to give them a few minutes and then we're going to do this Another little thing I do is when I go like this and I get a worm, let's see, let me pretend I get one. I take it and I put it in this corner. That way they all start going over there and there'll be less here. See, that one's here. There he goes. Let's check the moisture of this bin while we're here. So down there, it's a little on the dry side. More moist here. You see, this isn't good because breeding worms, they like it really moist. So that just shows me that I'm gonna have to keep this wetter next time. Sometimes I use a brush. And these things that I do are really good exercise for my hands. Plus, when I use this brush or the other one, this one, they're very gentle and they're very soft, so it doesn't hurt them or pinch them. This one, I could do bigger swipes with it. Luckily, the red wigglers are fat, so the adult ones are like easy to spot.
So what do you think guys? I've done a few here, but as you can see, it's too wet. So I'm gonna continue over there. So I'm still chugging along here. It's slowly happening. You know who I would love to see reach the 1,000? And I know I've told you this before. Is Rick from Gardening with Barchuckin. That's his channel. <laughs> I want to go live with Rick one night. So we could talk about worms and stuff. But that would be so cool to for him to reach the 1,000 before Christmas. What a Christmas gift. So guys, if you haven't subscribed to him, go over there and subscribe to him. He's he's a nice guy. I've known Rick a few years now from the worm farming community. And I'm hoping if Joe and I ever travel to uh, Maryland where he is, we could go visit. So let me keep going here. And if you guys are interested in my other channel, the composting worm lady go and pay me a visit over there I'm sorry little worm babies so here I'm down to a row of red wigglers oh my gosh wow let me see where you are <laughs> that is incredible. Wow. Amazing. Okay, so here I have all the cocoons, and occasionally I'm finding one that I missed. But here, in this one, I have all the adult ones. So, you can see, this is a trick I learned from another farmer. You take it like this, and you flip it over, and you get the majority of the worms at the bottom. The adult worms are here. So, I'm going to go put these in my nursery tub. So, they could keep breeding. So, here I'm dividing the bedding and castings that have all the cocoons into two containers this one and this one over here and i'm gonna label them cover them with damp newspaper and pretty much i leave them alone i just make sure they stay damp and the cocoons should hatch i would say in about four weeks give or take depends on the temperature if i had heating mats under these set at 80 degrees they'd hatch faster but i don't have that set up right now so that's what's going to happen with these. And that's how you divide some of these bins, you know, if you have the room. So I'm going to do that. So here are some bins that have worms in them. They only have about 200, 250 red wigglers in each one. I'm going to show you the amount of cocoons that I could get in three weeks. So the bedding is coconut coir, nice and damp, a little bit of dolomite lime, a little bit of azomite minerals, and that wet stuff at the top is their worm chow, the one that I make, but I wet it, I make it kind of like a paste, and I put a line down the middle. So I'm going to cover this in wet newspaper, and we're going to put a piece of plastic on it, and we're going to date this, and we're going to keep track of these, and I'm going to show you how many cocoons so you heard down there don't disappoint me <laughs> i hope you guys enjoyed this video i know i was all over the place but you see I'll, i do a lot of things in here and uh i just want to bring you along with me and uh, i know that you pick up tips and tricks along the way so this is gonna be fun all right so subscribe and like give me that thumbs up go find me on my other channel the composting worm lady and i'll see you guys next time take care 
So I hope you enjoyed that video. I am wiped out. <laughs> Look at the mess I got. But I'm going to clean this rest up. And I'm going to rest a little bit. Today I'm going to cook some chicken. So I'll see you next time. Take care.